Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be talking all about vehicle cargo. This is one of those businesses that doesn't really get brought up all too much in the space of YouTube, and I figured, you know what? I actually think vehicle cargo is not only one of the most fun businesses due to the fact of always having action-packed gameplay when you're either doing sources or sale missions, but as well, it can actually make some decent money if completed properly. So, as I said in today's video, I'll be letting you know the ins and outs and just about everything there is. Let's get straight into it! Let's start this video off simple, talking about how to get your hands on a vehicle warehouse. The first thing you're going to need to do is purchase an office building. You'll find one of these on Dynasty 8 Executive. There's a few office buildings around the map. We've got Maze Bank West, then you've got Lom Bank West, which is a ridiculous 3.1 million, the Maze Bank Tower, and the Arcadius Business Center. I usually recommend to either go for the Arcadius Business Center or most preferably the Maze Bank West. This is the cheapest by far and it's still in a very good location for all of the other properties that you can buy near it. Because of that, I usually suggest just to buy the Maze Bank West. Once you own an office building, you're going to head over to your main computer and you are going to click on Vehicle Cargo. At this point, you're going to get a prompt which shows you all of the vehicle warehouse maps. This is where you have the opportunity to purchase a warehouse. Now, there's a lot of different options ranging from super expensive price tags like 2.1 to 2.3 million. Heck, the most expensive is almost $3 million. I usually recommend just to buy the La Mesa Vehicle warehouse. It is the cheapest by far at only 1.5 million and it's basically in the center of the city so it's actually quite a good location. The only other location I think is decent is the Ellaboro Heights. This one's decent because of the fact you can land a cargo bob very easily at the spot but I still recommend the Mesa because it's a little bit closer to the city and your overall office buildings. Once you have purchased a vehicle warehouse, you're obviously going to want to start sourcing cars so you can sell them and make a profit. There are over 30 different missions in total, each with their own unique setup and challenges. These missions range from straightforward tasks like retrieving a vehicle from a location and delivering it to the warehouse, to more complex ones that involve car chases, stealing from crime scenes, or even evading the police. Some of these examples can include a photo finish, the car is involved in a race, you'll need to wait for the race to finish before you can take the car. A police chase. The car is being pursued by the police. You'll need to steal it and lose the cops. I'll be honest, that one sucks. You have to drive way ahead of the vehicle, get out of your car, and usually what I do is I pull out my sniper, shoot them in the face, and then hopefully the car will come to a stop without crashing. Sometimes when I get the police chase one, I'll just load into a new lobby and start a new source because it's a pretty lame one. You've got movie stunt, the car's on a movie set, you need to perform a stunt to retrieve it. Amateur hour, the car is equipped with a bomb and you'll have to drive carefully to avoid detonation. Honestly, that one's super easy, so it's actually really fun. You've got bargain shop, you are provided with a location, the car is fitted with a tracker, you must find the vehicle among many others. Showroom, the car is displayed in a showroom, you'll have to break in and retrieve it. Guarded, the vehicle's in a secured location with many guards, you'll need to deal with the guard to get the car. There are a lot. I mean, that is just seven of them that come to my mind. As I said, there are over 30. Each sourcing mission brings its own challenges, which adds variety and gameplay to the entire business, keeping it engaging and fresh. It's a good idea to prepare for various situations and have a strategy for each type of mission to minimize damage to the vehicle, as repair costs can cut into your profit margins when selling. Generally, these missions are pretty easy, and on average, you're probably only going to take two to $3,000 worth of damage, and that is including NPCs shooting at you, so it's really not that expensive. A simple three-minute payphone hit will pay you $75,000, basically giving back all the money that you'll spend on repairs anyways, so you shouldn't have to worry all too much. 
I recommend to complete these missions as fast as possible just by calling in either a Sparrow or an Oppressor Mark II outside of your office building, flying all the way over to wherever the location is and then driving the vehicle back. You can use a Cargo Bob like you can see in front of me, but honestly the Cargo Bob is so dang slow that I don't really recommend to use it, especially because a lot of the missions you actually have to source vehicles with, you can't actually use the Cargo Bob. There's one mission where you have to get a specific timed lap, like a time trial, to get the car to then drive it back. And with that race, your cargo bob's essentially useless. So, as I said, there are certain missions that are harder than others. I usually just recommend to pull out a fast vehicle, complete the missions as fast as possible, and deliver it back to your warehouse. While sourcing for your warehouse, you will notice that there are three different types of vehicles that you can get. Standard range, mid range, and top range. And this is where we can break into how you can make the most money with the business. You're gonna make the most money only selling top range vehicles. But you might be asking, well, how do I only source top range if there's also mid and standard? Well, it's actually quite simple. There are 10 unique standard range vehicles and 10 unique mid range vehicles, while there are 12 unique top range. All you need to do is start sourcing cars and fill up your vehicle warehouse without selling any of them. Your aim should be to collect all the standard and mid-range cars. As I said, total of 20 unique models without getting any duplicates. Once you have each of the 20 unique standard and mid-range cars, the game will mostly give you top range vehicles when you source next. Once you have filled your warehouse with the 10 unique standard range and 10 unique mid range, it is guaranteed that you will only get top range cars every single time you source. Just to make sure that you don't go over 32 vehicles or you will start to get duplicates. As I said before, there are only 32 unique vehicles available that you can source in your warehouse. It really makes you wonder why Rockstar didn't just make the limit of 32 cars. But either way, make sure that once you have all of the standard and mid-range vehicles, you only sell top range. And that's it. Then you source and sell, source and sell. It will be an easy ecosystem of only getting top range vehicles. So now let's break into profits. How much money will you make with vehicle cargo? Well, it's definitely not the most profitable business. If running it fully kitted out in a public lobby, you will make around $390,000 an hour. That's not a crazy amount, but to be fair, it's actually pretty easy for the effort put in. As we can see in front of me, I have a bunch of top range cars. And if I press export, we can see that I will get $100,000 from the top range vehicle, and then I'm paying $20,000 to modify the car. So that means I'm making a profit of $80,000. However, if you are in a public lobby with over 21 people, you will also get a high demand bonus. And this is actually really nice because it takes the profit to $130,000 from what is normally $80,000. Because of this, you can sell three cars every hour because there's a 20 minute cooldown, making in total $390,000. That's really easy. That's literally just three cars every hour. And by the way, sourcing these vehicles only takes about five minutes on average. So you have 15 minutes to do whatever you want while waiting. Usually what I recommend to do is also a payphone hit because payphone hits are also a 20 minute cooldown. Meaning that if you add in the amount of money hourly you can make with a payphone hit plus vehicle cargo, you can make around $650,000 an hour just with these two businesses alone. That's without even adding in any passive and background money. So easily, you can be making upwards of 1.2 to $1.3 million if you have your nightclub and your bunker and your acid lab and all the passive businesses running in the background. Well, here is something that you probably would not expect me to say, but selling vehicle cargo in public lobbies is actually safer and will make you more profit than you will in a solo session. Now, the more profit makes sense, because obviously there's a high demand bonus, but how the heck is it more safe, you may be asking? Aren't there players that are going to blow you up? Well, possibly. If there's a really, really nasty player, they might try to blow you up. But as I've learned in the past, first of all, people don't really care about vehicle cargo for a couple reasons. A, the vehicles are actually quite fast, making these missions very easy and quick to complete. I mean, this mission was only about a minute and a half of me driving, and I'm already done with it. So that's the first reason why you don't usually have to worry about being blown up or, you know, something like that. The second reason that this is flat better to sell in public
public lobbies is because AI will not spawn to shoot at you. If you are playing in a solo session, an invite only lobby, every single time NPCs will spawn in to shoot you. In fact, to showcase just how annoying NPCs can be while doing the delivery, let's do one really quick. Let me just change the color of my car. I always do chrome just to do them as quick as possible. So there you go. We have fully kitted out our Reaper. At this point, we're going to load into the lobby and here we go. We have a 2.38 mile journey to deliver this vehicle. So as you can see, this lobby is completely solo and it is just me in it. So we don't have to worry about anybody blowing us up. But in return, as I said, there's going to be NPCs and you can see them right in front of me. So these guys are just going to shoot at the car and look at that. They just pop my tire. So we actually just lost about $3,000 worth of value. Oh, they just popped my other tire too. So I think this is a pretty good example on why I absolutely tell people never to sell in a solo session. Now there is a way to go around this and it's quite easy. You can use a cargo bob, which will solve the problem. But the problem with using a cargo bob is you're gonna have to spend $2 million on the aircraft. That's a lot of money. So my suggestion, just sell in a public lobby. Even if you're in a public lobby that only has like two people, as long as you don't want to deal with NPCs shooting at you, just sell in a public lobby. Before we finish off today's video, there's still one last thing to talk about, and that is special vehicles. Inside of your vehicle warehouse, you have a unique garage. It is not able to store any personal vehicles, but it is able to store special vehicles, specifically in accordance to vehicle cargo. For example, we have the Ramp Buggy and the Phantom Wedge. We also have the Ruiner 2000. Now, I don't own vehicles like the Armored Boxville or the Rocket Voltic because they're pretty dang useless, but if you buy them, they will also be sent to this garage. Now, the Phantom Wedge alone is an amazing vehicle and a major reason to purchase a vehicle warehouse. Why, you may ask? Well, the Phantom Wedge is able to be used in the long fin source mission for the Cayo Perico heist. And while it may only save you around one minute of time, if you're a player like me who has done the Cayo Perico heist probably hundreds of times at this point, then that one minute starts to add up quite a bit. So I believe the Phantom Wedge is a very worthwhile investment, especially because not only do you get that vehicle, but you get a whole vehicle warehouse with it that you get to make some money back with in the process. The best way to sum up vehicle cargo is if you like driving, it is an incredibly fun business. Sure, it might not be the best on making money. You can do the Dr. Dre contract over and over paired with the Cayo Perico heist, but I'm going to be honest, I get quite bored of it. So I like to go over to vehicle cargo because it's a little different. Plus, I like driving cars, so it's very fun to customize and sell cars in sale missions. So at the end of the day, vehicle cargo will not make you the most money in Grand Theft Auto Online. But as I said, if you like driving cars, it's a decent chunk of money for very little effort. Plus it can be really fun to do the different and unique missions. So let me know what you guys think about vehicle cargo in the comments down below. And let me know if you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more like this, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.